So this is our video lesson for section 13.3. So we've already talked about gases. Hopefully you watched my video lesson on liquids. And so now let's talk a little bit about solids. All right, so in general, the properties of solids reflect the orderly arrangement of their particles and the fixed location of their particles. Okay, so if you look at the solids, are the particles moving? Look carefully, because they are. Okay, but remember, they cannot change positions. So they vibrate in those fixed locations, but they don't move past one another. All right, so they have an orderly arrangement and those particles are in fixed locations, but they're still moving. Vibration is still moving. So what happens if you heat it? Well, if you heat it, you start vibrating a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And eventually, you heat it up enough and get that vibration, that kinetic energy going enough, then they'll get to where they're like, wait a minute, I don't like these fixed locations. Let's trade places. And so at that point, it has become a liquid. And so you have melted it. All right, so when you heat a solid, its particles vibrate more rapidly because of course, remember, temperature and kinetic energy are directly proportional. If you apply heat, the particles speed up because they have more energy. All right, so the melting point is the temperature at which a solid changes to a liquid. So in my boiling point that you should just learn about in my last video lesson, um, melting point is a definition that's probably more normal to you. Okay, so it's the temperature when a solid changes to a liquid. So again, we get that kinetic energy up and they can kind of break out of those fixed locations. All right, so let's click. Okay, so crystals. Well, first of all, what is a crystal? A lot of y'all, you have an idea, but your idea sometimes isn't all the way right. So, in a crystal, the particles are arranged in an orderly, repeating, three-dimensional pattern called a crystal lattice. Okay, so, in other words, yes, gemstones are crystals, but those aren't the only crystals. Ice is a crystal, sugar is a crystal, salt is a crystal. Okay, yes, real gemstones are, like emeralds are crystals. But some of the compounds that I have in my uh, chemical room, cupric sulfate, those are crystals also. It's just anything with a 3D repeating pattern. All right, now, the smallest group of particles within a crystal that retains that geometric shape is known as the unit cell. So like, let's look at this example where it's broken up in ions for us. This is a salt crystal right here. So you have your sodium and your chloride ions. All right, so if you look, this is just a huge 3D repeating pattern of them. If we could take the smallest little chunk that still keeps this shape, this geometric pattern, that's the unit cell. What I like to compare it to is like, think of a brick wall. Okay, we have a whole wall made of bricks, but one brick is the unit cell because one brick is responsible for the wall being able to be made. Okay, so unit cell, like I said, is just the smallest group because, see, we just have this whole repeating thing happening here. And so if we could take the smallest part that has that pattern, that would be our unit cell. All right, so let's click and look at melting. So we've already learned this before. Ionic solids have high melting points. High is considered above 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, molecular solids, on the other hand, have low melting points, which is considered below 300 degrees Celsius. Y'all, we learned this like all the way back in chapter seven and eight when we first started talking about the difference in ionic and molecular compounds. So hopefully this is not new, it should be reviewed. However, not all solids melt. Okay, let's talk about a couple that you know. Okay, first, let's talk about wood. When you heat up wood, does it melt into liquid wood? No, that'd be super cool if it did. I would love to have liquid wood. That would be pretty awesome. But that's not what happens. It ends up burning and eventually decomposes into ashes. Okay, so some solids, they decompose. Some solids, they melt, like this is chocolate, you can't tell. Um, they melt, but they don't have a specific melting point. Like for example, if you're melting ice, right when you hit that melting point, it starts going from solid clearly to liquid. There's no weird in-between gel-like phase that happens. But think about when you're melting chocolate. When you're melting chocolate, have you ever had where, you know, you left something out in the car and it still looks like it's in the solid form, but then you go to grab it and it just completely mushes? And so it's not really a solid, but it's not completely a liquid. It's just kind of a mush. Okay, so that would be an example of something that doesn't have a specific melting point because it's a mixture. Some components melt a little bit faster than others, and so you get this weird kind of like mushy mixture. 
okay? But like I said, ionic, high melting points, molecular, low, but remember, not all solids melt. Some decompose and not all solids have a specific melting point. Some gradually soften over time. So let's talk a little bit about allotropes. So we learned about allotropes all the way back in chapter two, and we sang about allotropes in my What Is Matter song. So hopefully you remember that. Um, the allotropes are two or more different molecular forms of the same element in the same physical state. So, common example is carbon. <coughs> Sorry, carbon. Carbon is C on the periodic table. Carbon can exist as diamond. Looks like this. When it exists as diamond, every carbon is covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms. It is very, very strong and it's called a tetrahedral formation, okay? But carbon could also exist as graphite. Graphite is what is in your pencil, which you're hopefully writing with right now to fill out your note sheet. All right, so graphite is very different from diamond. Diamond looks like a crystal. Most of the time it should be close to colorless. Um, you can see through it, light passes through it. It's very hard. Graphite, on the other hand, is dull. I mean, it's a little shiny, but it's, you can't, it doesn't reflect a lot of light as well as a diamond. It's soft, that's why we can write with it. It's a dingy gray. Um, and that's because it has a honeycomb arrangement. It makes honeycombs, and there's layers of them. And so as you write with them, those layers of honeycomb break off. All right, it could also exist as buckyball. Buckyball literally is a ball-shaped molecule. It has alternating six and five-membered rings, and overall its molecular formula is C60. So there's 60 carbons in a buckyball. So even though these three, and it's found in ashes and soot. So even though these three things look different and have different properties, they are all only made of carbon. So those are allotropes of carbon. Okay, other things that have allotropes are like phosphorus. You have red phosphorus, you have white phosphorus. They're both phosphorus, but they're allotropes. They're different forms. For sulfur, like you could have S8. That's eight sulfurs bonded together. Or you could just have S. Okay, and so those are allotropes. For oxygen, you can have O2, which is oxygen from the atmosphere, like we breathe in. Or you could have O3, which is still made of oxygen, but it's ozone. That's what's in our ozone layer. If you try to live off of breathing in ozone, you're not going to live very long. Okay, so even though they're both made of only oxygen because one is O2 and one is O3, they're different for our bodies. All right, so allotropes are the same element, different form. So the bonding is different in them. So we talked a little bit about crystals, but I mean, I don't know about you, but I've noticed that not all solids are crystals. So not all solids are crystals. They're also amorphous solids. Amorphous solids lack an ordered inter internal structure. Okay, so whereas crystals are super orderly, 3D repeating pattern, crystal lattice, amorphous solids, they don't have that ordered structure. So what are some examples? Well, rubber, plastic, and asphalt are all examples of amorphous solids. And so hopefully you can think about what these look like compared to what like salt or sugar or crystals look like and you can think about the difference and when you look at them visually. So glass is an amorphous solid that is a super cool liquid. I'll go ahead and tell you, on the test, I like to put a question about what is a glass. And then all of you like to select one or the other, and it is both of them. It is an amorphous solid. It lacks that ordered internal structure, but it was a super cooled liquid. So it's cooled in a way that allowed it to become rigid without fully crystallizing. Okay, so it's an amorphous solid that is a super cool liquid. All right, might be something you wanna read more about. Glass is actually really, really, really cool, but we don't have time to go over all the coolness of glasses right now. All right, so let's go ahead and knock out this section assessment. So in general, how are the particles arranged in solids? Well, they're orderly, they're orderly. You could say they're close together. You could say they're in fixed positions. Any of that would be fine. All right, number two. How do allotropes of an element differ? Well, remember, it's the same atom, same element, but the bonding is different, or the arrangement. So you put the bonding or the arrangement is different. So remember, O2 is different from O3. 
All right, and then the last one, how do the melting points of ionic solids generally compare with those of molecular? Well, as we discussed all the way back in chapter seven and eight, and as we just discussed, ionic solids have high melting points, whereas molecular solids have low melting points. Ionic solids have high, and molecular solids have low. So the main thing from this job is know the difference in crystal, amorphous, okay, amorphous lacks that internal structure, crystal has that 3D repeating pattern, know what an allotrope is, okay, and remember melting, going from liquid to, uh, sorry, going from solid to liquid because we're speeding up that kinetic energy. All right, but that's it for section three.